Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lakeside Christian Fellowship, a family of faith connecting people to Christ and to each other. Welcome to everybody here. Thanks for coming out and braving the, the COVID onslaught that we're having. A lot of people are missing today. So to our YouTube streamers, hopefully the rest of the congregation is on the other end of this internet connection. Nice, nice to have you with us as well. Let's see. Any guests this morning. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. We'd love to hear where you're from. I'm Rick Johnson. Portland, Oregon. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Our numbers are usually a little larger here in, here in the church on Sunday, but like I say, we've had a little, little bit of uh, COVID running through the congregation and People are staying home as they should. Um, please remember to sign the blue registration uh, uh, sheets that are on the, on the pews. Let's see a couple of announcements. Uh, remember that the uh, Lakeside Christian Women's Fellowship is having a purse auction and salad luncheon a week from tomorrow. That would be Monday, May 15th from 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, bring a purse or two to auction, bring a salad of your choice, and bring a friend. All ladies are welcome to attend this fun event. Edwina Wol Wolsey is the point of contact. Uh, okay, there's uh, an announcement from the North Shore Pastors Alliance. Uh, the annual March for Jesus is scheduled for Saturday, May 20th, at 10 a.m., we'll gather at the eastern quadrant of the Dawn Drive at Loman Ford intersection and then march down Dawn Drive with a police escort. Banners will go up next Monday. And I know Chuck may have more to say about that, but when, when he stands up. Um, and the women's Bible study meets at LCF on Wednesdays at 9.30. A new study began on March 29th. Uh, using the book called The Twelve Disciples. Sharon Snowder is the point of contact for that, for more information. The altars are to the glory of God and have been placed by Betty Houghton in honor of the birthday of her children's father. Any more announcements? Okay. Okay, the preludes. Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. In the chaos of life, 
O Lord, we take refuge in you. You are our rock and our fortress. In the midst of struggles and troubles, O Lord, we take refuge in you. You are our rock and our fortress. In the midst of questions and doubts, O Lord, we take refuge in you. You are our rock and our fortress. Now let's join together in the hymn of praise 545, verses 1, 3, and 5. Thank you, thank you. Please be seated. And I add my welcome to those who uh, are seated in the congregation this morning. I know that uh, uh, over the last uh, week or so, uh, there's been an outbreak of COVID uh, in Lago Vista. So it's not with this church. I think all the churches are affected uh, by it. We have at least a dozen uh, of our members who are who have tested positive with COVID, and a couple who have tested negative, but they have bronchitis or you know it's uh, the the typical uh, winter um, colds that come with the the winter and uh, moving into spring. So I almost said that the praise report were all of you who did not test positive for COVID. So that's a praise report. If you're negative, that's a praise report. God bless you. Um, Bill mentioned uh, the March for Jesus. Uh, that is an annual event, and it's open to all the churches. Uh, and normally it, it occurs on a, on a Saturday, this time on, on May 20th. And we gather right across uh, Dawn Drive um, uh, and, and Loman. And there will be, for those who don't uh, want to walk or don't care to walk, um, there will be a flatbed trailer with chairs, and uh, we go up um, to City Hall and uh, have a little worship service up there, and uh, you're all invited uh, to uh, come and, and worship with us on Saturday, May 20th at 10 a.m. Uh, so... Um, a couple of, um, I was going to do the birthdays and anniversaries today, but I, um, <laughs> I didn't bring the names. So we'll, we'll uh, uh, you, you, all, you all know what birthdays you have, and I think Joe and Glenda have an anniversary, right? Yesterday. Yesterday. Happy anniversary. How, how, how many years? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. How are you doing with your surgery? Oh, okay. good. Good to have you back. Good to have you here. And congratulations. 
on your anniversary. Um, there's a couple of prayer recur uh, uh, concerns that I need to bring to your attention. Uh, there's a, a man by the name of Rod Schaffner. Uh, he and his wife, uh, Sandra, live in uh, Jonestown, and they're close uh, friends with the Meyerhoffs. And Rod has been diagnosed uh, with pulmonary fibrosis, um, and the prognosis is not good. Uh, so uh, just keep Rod and uh, Sandra Schaffner uh, in your prayers. Um, Paul and Patsy Rogers are under the weather. I don't know whether they tested negative or not, but I talked with Paul, and uh, he said that uh, uh, they're going to stay home and stay away uh, for this uh, for this Sunday, but uh, he's in the pulpit uh, next Sunday, so please um, uh, come back uh, next Sunday and, and hear Paul Rogers preach. So that's uh, May 14th. That's Mother's Day, by the way, so he's preaching on Mother's Day. So um, Jeannie Carroll has surgery coming up, um, and she's also uh, tested positive for COVID. So she wants to get rid of all that because the surgery is May 15th. So keep uh, Jeannie in your prayers. Dick Sanders is having knee surgery in a couple of weeks. So um, keep, uh, keep Dick and uh, Wilma in your prayers. Um, Randy Halsett is in his final week of his treatment for cancer. Uh, and Ginger has tested positive for COVID. So she's staying away from Randy. <laughs> Uh, because we don't want uh, anything. His immune system is, is uh, a bit compromised at this point in time. So keep Randy and Ginger in your prayers. Uh, Rick Waters uh, tested positive for COVID. Uh, Deb Reed, our office manager, tested positive for COVID. Uh, June Freeman tested positive for COVID. Um, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Dick Sanders... Um, Elise and Keith Hoagland uh, tested uh, positive for COVID. June Freeman, Linda, and Richard Brown. A lot of people. Let's just stop right there because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people in this community have tested positive. And apparently there was uh, some, uh, some super spreader event or an event uh, that occurred and there was people uh, who did, didn't know that they were exposed to COVID who were walking around. And uh, that's how that spreads, okay? So we're glad to have you here this morning. There's masks in the back of the room uh, and uh, hand sanitizers back there uh, if you uh, would uh, care to use them. Sharon Waters still recovering uh, from um, surgery. And um, Dave Freeman is recovering from surgery. Uh, Joe's here today. Good to see you. Um, and good to see Fran and, uh, and Fred Pontesso back because they, they, uh, they got an early jump on everybody and they, they tested positive for COVID after coming off a trip and so now they're back. And so it's good to have you back here uh, this morning. Are there any others? Oh, um, Donna Nash called me this morning, uh, texted me this morning. Her mother fell yesterday um, and they took x-rays no broken bones. However, um, they, um, uh, she was unresponsive this morning when they tried to wake her up. So Donna and Wayne are headed uh, toward uh, the hospital uh, as we speak. Tim, good to see you back. Uh, Tim Casey, good to see you back. Hey, yeah, prayer works. Yes, it does. It, uh, prayer does work. Any others? Well, why don't we uh, just um, take a few moments and, 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 and bow your heads and uh, pray silently, uh, not only for those that we have uh, named here this morning, but those that God has put on your hearts. Father God, uh, as we come to your throne of grace, we uh, uh, we are at, at times in life uh, there are uh, 
um, situations where uh, we're, we fall ill. Our bodies are reacting to something that is in, uh, in the air. And, and Father God, uh, we know that you know those who have tested positive and those, um, those who have um, uh, tested, uh, like I said, tested positive for COVID. And Father, just be with them and their families as they uh, go through uh, this time uh, together. Um, may it be quick. May uh, the, the, the symptoms be mild. Uh, and Father, just uh, bring them back to health. And Father, just be with um, the families uh, who are, um, uh, who are uh, suffering from uh, heartbreak and heartache uh, tonight uh, uh, in Cleveland, Texas and in New York uh, over the shootings uh, that have taken place over the last uh, couple of weeks. And Father, would just be with them. And Father, as we uh, close this time uh, of prayer, we know that prayer works. We know that if we come to you and we come to your throne, that you will hear our prayers. And Father, as we, as we pause for a few moments, let us always remember the prayer that your, your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Bill, thank you. Today's scripture is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. You can find in the back of your bulletin. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you, because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you also will be. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you for so long a time, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father, as he remains in me, does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Because I am going to the Father, and whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, so that, it, so that the Father may glorify in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who want to be here that cannot. And to you who are watching over YouTube, I welcome you to the worship service here uh, at Lakeside and hope uh, that we will see you next week. Author and pastor, um, King Duncan, delivered a sermon a while ago that used General George S. Patton as an illustration. Pastor Duncan writes that Patton had a great respect for Army chaplains. He always had them at staff meetings and when important decisions were going to be made. And he was always calling on chaplains to, in Patton's words, get a hotline to God. So during the Battle of the Bulge, when the weather was so terrible, General Patton ordered the chaplain to write a prayer that would change the weather. The resulting prayer went something like this. Restrain these immoderate storms, O Lord. Grant us fair weather for battle. Graciously hearken to us as soldiers who call upon thee that 
are armed with thy power, we may advance from victory to victory and establish thy justice among men and nations. Amen. Well, General Patton gave that prayer on December 12, 1944. And it took a few days to clear the weather, but Patton's army did advance from victory to victory. And Pastor Duncan concluded it would appear that even God couldn't say no to George Patton. And this from Christianity in Crisis. There was an article called the Superman Syndrome. A few years back, a well-known televangelist sent green prayer cloths to his thousands of viewers, and God supposedly told him that the prayer cloths would be his point of contact between him and the audience for releasing God's blessing. And with one essential condition, his viewers needed to send lots of money with the prayer cloth or as he put it, sow your very best seed. To those who returned the green cloth with money, the televangelist promised great prosperity. Send me your green prayer cloth as my point of contact with you. When I touch your cloth, it will be like touching you. When you touch this cloth, it will be like you taking my hand and touching me. I want the anointing that God has put upon my life for miracles of finance and prosperity to come directly from my hand to yours. You can reign like a king on earth. Also, as a bonus, the televangelist said that within months of sending in her prayer cloth, one Roman received $286,000 in bonds and $65,000 in cash. Also, as a bonus, her husband was cured of alcoholism. Now, that's interesting, I think. Get rich and have your family problems solved in a moment by just sending for a prayer cloth. I think that televangelist misinterpreted Jesus' words about living an abundant life. And one more item, and please bear with me. This time from a newspaper. I want you to ponder this. The Reverend Patrick Leary is the rector of the Shrine of the Most Holy Redeemer in Las Vegas, Nevada. He says visitors to the cathedral there often make the same request. Father, will you pray for me to win? And pointing around that beautiful church, Father Leary says, I tell them that if it was that easy, do they think that we'd still be in debt for this building? And he went on to say, I believe in the power of prayer, but even prayer has its limits. Interesting. Even prayer has its limits. Let's hold on. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. Noted English theologian Lester Weather, uh, uh, Leslie, Weatherhead once said that when he was a high school student, he had a very difficult examination, and he had discovered this verse, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do. Well, he took it to heart. He believed that verse meant that all he had to do was ask, and he would pass the exam. He told God he was willing to believe in God's promises, and he wanted a good grade. So the next day, Weatherhead went in to take the exam. The results came back. He failed. <laughs> Weatherhead became disillusioned. He rebelled and almost lost his faith. 
he came to the conclusion that the promises of God and the promises that were held in the Bible were not good. All because God had granted, had not granted his wish for a good grape. The next year, he's still in high school. He had to repeat the course, so he did. And this time, he went to class every day. He listened to the lectures. He took notes. He did his homework. And what do you think happened? He passed. But then Weatherhead decided, well, I did that on my own. God didn't help me one bit. I just did it all my own. I don't need God. I can do things by myself. And it took Leslie Weatherhead some years to understand that his own powers and abilities were in reality the power that God had given him. He began to realize that God had already given him the power to pass the examination, but he had not used that power the first time around. God never gives us more power than we need. And I will confess to you, I'm working on heeding those words. Another theologian said, until we are willing to use what God has already given us, there is no need to ask for more. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's quite a claim. Is it not? So let's peel back the onion. Or as a late night TV host said, let's take a closer look. First of all, Jesus is talking to his disciples. I've printed verses 1 through 7 of chapter 14 to give you the context for Jesus' words. You've all heard John 14 before. It's most used verse in memorial and funeral services than any other verse in the Bible. But I want to pick up with verse 8, and you can follow along. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you for so long a time, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. Now you can, and how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father, as he remains in me, does his works. Believe me, guys. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe the works themselves. Then verse 12, truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, watch it, he will do also and greater works than these he will do because I'm going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, this will I do so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Did you get it? Did you catch it? He's giving encouragement to his disciples. He's giving them a pep talk. You've seen, he said to them, you've seen the blind receive their sight. And you've seen the lame be well. 
Truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, in the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. He's saying to the disciples and saying to each and every one of us, you're going to do greater works than that. It's encouragement. And Jesus was talking to the church. He's not talking about new houses or new cars or even passing an examination. He was talking about the work of the kingdom. He was saying that when the, his disciples, including you, decide to get into action doing God's work as he called us to do, and when we enlist God's help, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for the church of Jesus Christ. Nothing is impossible for Lakeside Christian Fellowship. Nothing. Amazing things are accomplished in this world by people who believe and will not give up. Our text for the day says that you and I are capable of amazing things. When we set out to serve Jesus Christ, Jesus was speaking to his church when he said, If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Nothing is impossible for Jesus' church. Nothing is impossible for Lakeside Christian Fellowship. But there's something else just as important. Jesus adds a qualifier. Did you catch it? And whatever you ask in my name, Jesus promises, that will I do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Christ will do anything we ask if it glorifies the Father. That's God's word for us today. Wouldn't it be great if we had a dream for this church that was big enough that we would have to depend on God to accomplish it? And wouldn't it be great if we searched our hearts and our souls with prayer so that our dream would match God's dream for this church? Christ tells us we can see such evidence if we dream great, dream great dreams. And if those dreams are to God's glory and not our own. And here's the last thing to be said. You and I, you and I can have a part in the great things that God is doing, not only in this community, but in this church. If we dream a dream for this church, and if it is truly God's dream, then great things will happen. And each of us can be a part of it. One of America's greatest churches is Grace, is Grace Baptist Church of Philadelphia. Dr. Russell Conwell, the author of a book that has influenced millions of lives called Acres of Diamonds, founded that church. And during the height of his ministry, Conwell preached to more than 4,000 people on any given Sunday in that church. But now the church, which was once called Baptist Temple, came to be built, is not a well-known story. So let me share it with you. Let me take a few moments to share their story. Hattie Wyatt. Hattie Wyatt was a little girl, and she went to Sunday school. And that old building, which is located behind the current church building, one particular Sunday she came for Sunday school. She couldn't get in because there were too many children who wanted to go to Sunday school. And the building was already full, so little Hattie went home disappointed, but determined to do something about the problem. She began to save her pennies, so a church building large enough for everyone could be built. Hattie saved until she had 57 cents. 
And unfortunately, she became terminally ill. And after she had died, her heartbroken mother took the 57 cents to Pastor Conwell, Conwell and told him that Hattie had been saving for a new church building. Conwell was deeply moved and shared Hattie's vision with the congregation the next Sunday. And the Lord used that 70, uh, 57 cents to become seed money for the raising of many thousands of dollars to build Grace Baptist Church. While that great building was being built, people called it Conwell's Folly. But they quit calling it that when it was finished and filled to capacity week after week after week. But that's still not all. From Grace Baptist Church came Temple University with its colleges of liberal arts, education, business, music, and fine arts, and graduate programs in law and medicine and medical technology. Its students number in the thousands. Its graduates number in the tens of thousands. The church and the university all owe their beginning to Hattie Wyatt and her 57 cents. And you may be saying to yourself, Chuck, <laughs> that's a wonderful story. That's a nice story. But we're not a church in a city the size of Philadelphia. So what's that got to do with us? Plenty. I believe that over the last 15 years, we have done marvelous things, and I believe that today we fill a niche in this community. And I want to build on the legacy of the founding members of Lakeside Christian Fellowship, a family of faith connecting people to Christ and to each other. So I say, is it impossible? No. It's only the fulfillment of Christ's promise to his church. So I ask you a question this morning. What is your dream? And you at home, think about this. What is your dream? What is your vision for our church? Why not put Christ to the test? Let's dream a dream so big that it's big enough that we have to depend on God. And then let's go out and see that the dream comes true. After all, Christ has promised us, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father, what? Look. This is call and response. What does Christ say? That he may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do, Christ says, if it glorifies God in the Son. Let us pray. Father God, next year, this church celebrates its 15th anniversary. You've seen this church become what it is today. A family of faith connecting people to Christ and to each other. And Father God, this family of faith has a lot of needs for it to continue to grow. And Father, we pray that our dream is your dream. Provide us with your grace. Instill in us all that we need to continue by your will 
to grow this church. In a few moments, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. Let's consecrate our lives and this church to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please be seated as the ushers come forward with the tithes and offerings. Bless these gifts so freely given. May they be used to further your kingdom uh, through the efforts of this church and this community. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please be seated? For our guests here this morning, we pray, we uh, celebrate open communion, uh, which means that um, you don't have to be a member of this church. This is Christ's table. This is not my table. This is not any of us's table. It's Christ's table. And you're invited, excuse me, you're invited to come and partake of uh, the elements here today. Um, All we ask is that you have a faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So let's begin on page 12 of the hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly seek, uh, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we have confessed that we have not, not loved your whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Would you turn now to page 12, the great thanksgiving. 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would those helping with communion please come forward?
the body of Christ given for you and for me. Christ poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. As the stewards are taking up the glasses, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. His eye is on the sparrow, one of the most beautiful songs that has ever been written, in my opinion, and you're going to get a chance to sing it. It's an insert in your bulletin, so please rise and sing. Uh, his eye is on the sparrow. If you're here this morning wanting to join this fellowship of believers, uh, you're, you're welcome to attend, whether it's a first step in your walk with Jesus Christ or another step in your discipleship. Please come during the singing of His Eye is on the Sparrow.
is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Benediction today is when the planning team uh, made up of Edwina, Bill, Lance, and Chip come to you and ask you, what do you believe is God's dream for this church? What do you believe is his vision for Lakeside Christian Fellowship? What programs would you like to expand on or to create? Speak up. Let them know. This is God's church. This church is a verb. And we can make it happen. So let's dream so big that we have to depend on God to pull us through. And it will happen. It will. And whatever you ask in Jesus' name, that will he do. Why? Because the Father will be glorified in everything that you do if you do it in God's name and in Jesus' name. And all God's people said...